Greetings, dear friends. Uh, tonight's service is going to be found on page 243 of your hymnal. It is the service of evening prayer. Uh, if you don't have a hymnal, you can find the link once again on Facebook or in the description box underneath the video on YouTube. We begin our service. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and illumine your church. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ. We have come to the setting of the sun and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who led your people Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May his word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful, and you love your whole creation, and we, your creatures, glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. O Lord, I call to you, come to me quickly. Hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a watch before my mouth, O Lord, and guard the door of my lips. Let not my heart incline to any evil thing. Let me not be occupied in wickedness with evildoers. But my eyes are turned to you, O God, and you I take refuge. Strip me not of my life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Let us pray. Let the incense of our repentant prayer ascend before you, O Lord, and let your loving kindness descend on us. With pure, that with purified minds we may sing your praises with the church on earth and the whole heavenly host and may glorify you forever. Amen. Our psalm for this evening is from Psalm 10. Why, O Lord, do you stand afar off? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? In arrogance the wicked hotly pursue the poor. Let them be caught in the schemes that they have devised. For the wicked boasts of the desires of his soul, and the one greedy for grain curses and renounces the Lord. In the pride of his face, the wicked does not seek him. All his thoughts are, there is no God. His ways prosper at all times. Your judgments are on high out of his sight. As for all his foes, he puffs at them. He says in his heart, I shall not be moved. Throughout, throughout all generations, I shall not meet adversity. His mouth is filled with cursing and deceit and oppression. Under his tongue are mischief and iniquity. He sits in ambush in the villages. In hiding places he murders the innocent. His eyes stealthily watch for the helpless. He lurks in ambush like a lion in his thicket. He lurks that he may seize the poor. He seizes the poor when he draws him into, into his net. The helpless are crushed, sink down and fall by his might. He says in his heart, God has forgotten. He has hidden his face. He will never see it. Arise, O Lord. O God, lift up your hand. Forget not the afflicted. This is our reading. Our first reading for this evening is from Job chapter 24. There are those who rebel against the light, who are not acquainted with its ways and do not stay in its paths. The murderer rises before it is light, that he may kill the poor and needy. And in the night he is like a thief. The eye of the adulterer also waits for the twilight, saying, No eye will see me. And he veils his face. In the dark they dig through houses, 
By day they shut themselves up. They do not know the light. For deep darkness is morning to all of them. For they are friends with the tears of deep darkness. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Our second reading for this evening is from 1 John chapter 3. For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. We should not be like Cain, who was of the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own deeds were evil and his brother's righteous. Do not be surprised, brothers, that the world hates you. We know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brothers. Whoever does not love abides in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading for this evening is from Mark chapter 14. It was now two days before the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to arrest him by stealth and kill him. For they said, Not during the feast, lest there be an uproar from the people. And following verse 53, And they led Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. And Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the guards and warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were seeking testimony against Jesus to put him to death. But they found none, for many bore false witness against him. But their testimony did not agree. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. My dear friends, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. If looks could kill, you've heard that before. Can you picture eyes filled with rage? Likely you've seen it in the eyes of another. You husbands know the look that your wife gives when you've pushed things too far. Perhaps you've seen it on your own face through an ill-timed glance in the mirror. In the ancient world and still today in some cultures, the evil eye is a glance that is thought to cause harm to the recipient. That's how I envision the eyes of the chief priests and scribes, the Sadducees and Pharisees, as they plotted Jesus' death in tonight's Passion reading. They were filled with hatred and murder as they gazed upon Jesus being greeted with praise in Jerusalem during Holy Week. And before that, when face to face with Jesus, they heard him speak woes and reproaches to them. If they could have spewed venom or shot arrows from their eyes at the Lord, they would have. How many of us, when chastised by a father or a mother for our misdeeds, stared at them with murderous eyes, huffed angrily back to our rooms for punishment, slamming the door and muttering words like, I hate you, just out of earshot of the one intended. Almost every parent movie ever has a scene where the angsty, rebellious team storms down the hallway shouting, I hate you, as the door slams behind them. However, most of us probably deserved our punishment. And after a chance to cool down, we realize that it is we who need to repent and change our behavior. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, said Jesus in Matthew's Gospel of chapter 23. No doubt with a rather stern, fatherly look. This rhetoric wouldn't fit in with Dale Carnegie's advice given in his 1936 bestseller, How to Win Friends and Influence People. But it is what they needed to hear. So those words were spoken in love. 
just as our parents had done in disciplining us. God and his representatives never speak the law to us in malice, but only because we need to recognize our sin and know what to repent of. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, said Jesus. For you build the tombs of the prophets and decorate the monuments of the righteous, saying, If we had lived in the days of our fathers, we would not have taken part with them in shedding the blood of the prophets. Thus you witness against yourselves that you are sons of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up, then, the measure of your fathers. Jesus wanted them to recognize their rank hypocrisy and to repent. So he mockingly says, fill up then the measure of your fathers. Go on then. Kill like your fathers did before. Live up to your family tradition. Jesus says this to bring them face to face with the murder that lay in their hearts under the pious pretenses of honoring the murdered prophets. And behind their pious platitudes of, we wouldn't have done what our fathers did. But multi-generational guilt is real when the sons of the fathers lack repentance. So Jesus challenges them to push things forward to their logical conclusion. I know your hearts. I can see the murder in your eyes. Go ahead. Walk in the steps of your fathers. Why don't you go ahead and kill me too? And continue your family tradition. There's nothing new under the sun said the preacher in Ecclesiastes. Murderous thoughts and looks are as old as the fallen to sin. Cain's downcast eyes became murderous towards his brother. The cause of murder is always the agency of man. But the original source is the devil, who Jesus says was a liar and murderer from the beginning. St. John says that the murderer Cain was of the evil one. In addressing the Jews who wanted to kill him, Jesus identifies Satan as the father of all who hate God's Son. But how does that pertain to us? Aren't John and Jesus just wailing on Cain and the murderous Jews? Surely the Lord's not talking to us pious Christians, is he? But listen to his word. His apostle, St. John, writes, Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. And a bit later, he says, If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. Follow the logic. If I claim to love God while hating my brother, I am both a murderer and a liar and cannot love God. And if I don't love God, then I must hate God. Looks like Cain and the hostile Jews and all of us are in the same boat. This is why we make this confession to Jesus in the hymn, Upon the cross extended. Verse 4 says, I caused thy grief and sighing by evils multiplying. As countless as the sands, I caused the woes unnumbered with which thy soul is cumbered. Thy sorrows raised by wicked hands. Don't lie to yourself. You have said in your heart, I have reasons for saying I hate my parents. I can make excuses for wishing that my brother were dead. I have good cause for casting an evil eye upon my neighbor. But that's enough to make you a murderer in God's sight and to place you under his wrath. The Jews filled up the measure of their fathers in tonight's Passion reading. And if we're honest with ourselves... We must see ourselves right along with them. What a marvel, then, that the father would allow his son to be murdered at the hands of sinful men. 
just to save a rotten bunch of rebellious sinners with eyes filled with rage against both God and man. But God shows his love for us that in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath, from the wrath of God. The wrath of God is not a murderous glance from the Father, but a look of righteous judgment upon the guilt of sin. We all deserve God's wrath, just as much as we deserved our, par our parents' punishment. But instead of giving us what we deserved, God put it all on Jesus. And Jesus willingly took it for us men and for our salvation. From the cross, Jesus looked upon the masses of humanity and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Original sin, which produces lies, hatred, murder, and every other sin, is so deep a corruption that we cannot recognize the depravity of what we think, say, or do, unless it is revealed to us by God's word. But once our murderous eyes have looked in horror on what we have really done, nailing the innocent Son of God to the tree with our sins, then we also are ready for the joyful good news of the forgiveness of all for, of our sins for the sake of Christ, for the sake of his voluntary sacrifice at the hands of murderers, the death by which he has extinguished the wrath of God toward us. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more. Now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Rejoicing is the theme for the fourth Sunday in Lent. So my friends, I encourage you, rejoice in Christ. Christ who has turned your murderous eyes away from sin, guilt, and despair. And has lifted them, lifted them up to look upon himself as your Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear friends, we continue with the Magnificat, found on page 248. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from this day all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things to me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. My soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. We join together for prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, 
For the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for Matthew Harrison and for President Don Fondo, for all pastors in Christ, for all servants of the church and for all the people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for our President Donald Trump for all public servants, for the government and those who protect us, that they may be upheld and strengthened in every good deed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for those who bring offerings, those who do good works in this congregation, those who toil, those who sing, and all the people present, who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for those impacted around the world by this outbreak, for health care workers and doctors that they may be kept saved, for all pastors and church workers as they continue to serve their people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Dear Lord, help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. To you, O Lord. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness, Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Go in God's peace.